This video is timestamped for your convenience. Minior is a pretty interesting Pokemon, a flying rock that initially looks like a simple star-shaped meteor, but Minior has a secret. For you see, this is not its true form. Rather, this is what a real Minior looks like, a vibrant, swirly-eyed bundle of joy, which is actually super cute. But there's more. This adorable star child has seven different color variants, one for each color of the rainbow. Unfortunately, you won't see these pretty colors in the wild, as the meteor form is the only naturally occurring version of this Pokemon. So how does a trainer go about finding all the colors then? Well, there's a couple options. One is to catch any Minior you see and let the Pokedex tell you what core is hidden inside. Do this over and over until eventually you catch them all. For trainers like me, who like getting Pokemon in Pokeballs that match them aesthetically, this isn't a great method. So another option is to lower the Minior's health to 50% or less. This will trigger its Shields Down ability, allowing the core to be seen. Then simply catch it. Easy, right? Well, not exactly. You see, there are a few issues with Minior. The biggest one being they have a nasty habit of exploding which can be remedied with a Pokemon with the Damp ability. I personally use a Gold Duck, but some other options include the Poliwag line and the Johto Form Wooper line as basic abilities. There are a bunch of Pokemon that have Damp as a hidden ability, but they're much more involved. Another issue is Minear's knowledge of the move Double Edge, which causes recoil damage making it likely to end itself if put too low on health. Its ability to self-harm is compounded by the fact it also knows the move Shell Smash, which lowers both its defense and special defense, meaning if you are trying to get it to a near critical health to either see its core color or increase its catch rate, it will purposely make it easier for you to accidentally kill it. I'm not so certain Minior is a fan of existing here. They appear to desire non-existence, which is another issue I discovered with them. They can just poof out of existence. If you're fighting a Minior that has dropped its shield and decide to leave that battle for whatever reason, the Minior just vanishes, disappears, there's not even an animation for it like there is for Ditto and Zorua. It's just straight up gone. Note, this won't happen if the Minior is still in its meteor form, whether you've damaged it or not. So no worries if, say, you run into a shiny and need to back out of battle to save. But yeah, these little guys are not all fun in games. Make sure you're prepared with a damp ability Pokemon to prevent pesky explosions and a low power move to whittle Minior's health away if that's the route you chose. Now there is one last problem with Minior and it's actually what prompted me to create the video you are watching now. You see, even if you do find and catch every Minior you see, you'll most likely notice they tend to be mostly the same core color. When I first started looking for Minior, I caught nothing but orange while exploring the canyon biome clifftops. After about 10 orange Minior, I gave up, moving to Chargestone Cavern, where I then found only yellow Minior. Naturally, the thought of, hey, maybe each area has a specific type, popped into my head. And if that's the case, maybe that information is reflected in the Pokedex, much like with the different forms of Deerling. I was then met with the sad reality that no, the Pokedex does not show where each color of Minior is. In fact, if you search up the core form, its habitat is unknown. Fantastic. Looking at the Meteor form Pokedex is not super insightful either. This, this is a lot. There are seven forms scattered across this vast zone like Chaos Emeralds that now I have to seek out. Which... While I will admit that there are some resources on Reddit and YouTube comment sections that pointed to the general locations of each color, from trainers' personal experiences, there was no concrete definitive this is where you go to get each color, so I decided to do what I'm good at, research. I spent several hours flying over each section of the highlighted map, documenting exactly where many are actually spawned at. I made a much more precise version of the Pokedex map. I then split those areas into chunks, mostly based on their subbiome.
creating 12 chunks total to test out. I then caught 100 minior per chunk, reaching a ridiculously high 1,200 minior. No, I am not okay. The results were, well, pretty predictable. Each location does in fact have a bias of about 75-80% to 80% towards specific core colors. And I can say from experience that there are certainly more preferable places to find certain cores within each zone. So let's go over exactly where each of them could be caught to make your life simpler than mine. Right after we take a quick sandwich break. Now this is by no means required to catch manure. I promise I purposely did most of my testing sandwich list just to be sure. But it is a step that makes finding what you want infinitely easier. Seriously, save your sanity and just make a sandwich. Minior are flying and rock type Pokemon, so both flying and rock recipes are on screen now for encounter level 2, which will be plenty if you're looking to get one of each color. You also have the option of making an encounter 3 sandwich with these ingredients instead, which will of course come with increased shiny odds. I do recommend the rock sandwich for shiny hunting all cores, but figured I'd include the flying as it is also an option. Although, be warned, the meteor form shiny is identical to the normal meteor form, so you won't be able to tell it's a shiny just by looking at it. I'll go over more on that a little later. For now, let's start catching us some minior in rainbow order, as that makes the most sense to me. Redcore minior are located within Torchlit Labyrinth over in the coastal biome. Flying to the coastal outdoor classroom, you can pan your camera to the left to find the entrance. Travel inside to find a small room with a Terra Gramble, which can have a minior if you are lucky. I'd recommend following the cave wall to the right, around to the room with a small ladder. I got a minior here, so we'll catch it to see it is in fact red. If you don't get a minior in these first few rooms, travel down by the ladder into the next room. Wait for a few spawns, and then go back and forth between this room and the latter one until the minure is kind enough to grace you with its presence. If you're using an encounter sandwich, this won't be an issue whatsoever. Orange core minure populate the canyon biome. Flying directly to the canyon plaza, travel to the right side of the cube structure on your legendary bicycle, jumping to this rock formation where minure can spawn. I didn't happen to get one here, so we're going to the biggest open area they can appear at, which just so happens to be a short flight straight ahead. While I catch this orange core, I do want to know if you're using a flying encounter sandwich, you will see Scyther tainting your minure spawn spaces, and if you're using a rock encounter sandwich, Cleaver will do the same thing. If you want a shiny hunt for an orange core, I would actually recommend going a little higher than this platform, up on this ledge here. It's not as wide open as the other area, but will completely eliminate the spawns of Cleaver. Scyther will still appear under a flying sandwich, so it's best to make the rock one for this particular hunt. Yellow core minure are by far the easiest to find, residing throughout the Chargestone Cavern's three levels. If by some weird chance you don't have access to the Charged Stone Cavern fly point, you can reach the cavern easily by navigating to the Polar Outdoor Classroom 1, then walking behind the gazebo and entering the gaping hole to your left. Upon venturing into the cavern, the Pokemon Center is visible a smidge to the right. I won't bother taking you all the way there. If you've watched this far, you are more than capable of reaching it by yourself. Back to discussing the minior. Where exactly in the cave to shiny hunt for yellow cores is really up to personal preference. There are many large open areas on each floor that work just fine, so pick the environment you find most enjoyable to be in and just go for it. Green core minior reside upon the rocky cliffs of the coastal biome. Fly to the coastal outdoor classroom, the same place we were for red cores, then turn your camera to face where your character is looking aka the exact opposite direction of the classroom. Scale the wall to reach the first ledge that Minior can appear on. In my case, I didn't have one spawn, so continued up to the next ledge beside some water. Minior can appear on any part of the rocky terrain here. That's our green core down. 
If you're looking to shiny hunt them, I'd recommend continuing yet farther up to the top ledge in this area. It's a large flat space where you'll be able to easily despawn the fletchling line if you're using the flying sandwich. Or you could eliminate that problem entirely and just use a rock sandwich instead. This ledge is still preferable over the lower ones as your spawns won't be hindered by the nearby water that Minior cannot appear in. Blue Core Minior are another really easy form to collect, covering the entire lower portion of the polar biome. After flying to Polar Outdoor Classroom 2, simply follow the mountain path downward until you spot a Minior. I found mine pretty quickly, but if you aren't so fortunate, just continue walking down the snowy path and towards the right side of the mountain to reach the snow fields. As expected, if you have an encounter sandwich active, there will just be hordes of Minior for you. Seriously, if you didn't make one earlier, you're going to want it for the last two, so please just do it. Indigo Core Minior is our first truly challenging one to find. It does have a really unique spawn location being this lone spot in the coastal biome, which you can access by flying to the coastal plaza, then following the grassy path around to this bridge. Jumping down on the left side will land you on a small beach with a cave. This cave is where the Indigo Minior are hiding. Unlike all of the previous Minior forms, there is no way to get massive amounts of Indigo Core to appear. This small cave has only ever given me up to three Minior at a time. If there aren't any spawns in, you can picnic in the mouth of the cave to reset the spawns. But yeah, this is not ideal. I'd recommend finding a mass outbreak for a shiny of the indigo variety. Violet Core Minior is our final form, and much like indigo, it's a cave dweller as well. This time taking refuge in the cave below Polar Outdoor Classroom 2. If you don't see any Minior like I didn't, return to the classroom via fast travel and then hop back down to the cave. Be aware that sometimes the Pokemon don't respawn using this method. It's a bit inconsistent if you're inside the cave when fast traveling, so I'd recommend standing on the outside snowy ledge before leaving for a better chance at new spawns appearing. But otherwise, that's how it's done. Luckily, a lot more Minior spawn in this cave, so shiny hunting a Violet Core is not nearly as annoying as Indigo Core. And that's it. All seven Minior Core color locations, thoroughly tested and mapped out for all trainers to find. Oh right, I haven't discussed how to actually shiny hunt the Minior. I did briefly mention before that the shiny Meteor form and normal Meteor form are identical. Which is completely true. You cannot visually know that a specific Minior is shiny in the wild, so you'll need to either encounter every Minior you see, which is an extremely slow process, or do the much better method and have your Pokemon auto battle the Minior. You see, a Pokemon will not auto battle a shiny, no matter how much you tell it to. Here's footage of me being dramatic with a Litwick as comical evidence. Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're definitely real. He's gonna tell me, no, I don't want to hit it. Don't make me hit it. So you'll just repeatedly send your Pokemon to attack the floating stars till eventually it refuses to slaughter one. That will be your shiny. Hopefully. If you've used auto battle enough, you're sure to know that sometimes a target is too high up or on a slope or too close to a wall and your Pokemon just won't take it out. Just be aware that this is going to be a patience and tolerance testing hunt with one of the most self-unaliving Pokemon to attempt capturing when you do finally find it. If you happen to get lucky and find a mass outbreak of Minior, or, you know, date skip for one, then you'll hunt them much the same as I just described with a couple small adjustments. Do note that all Minior in an outbreak will be of one color. You'll still auto battle the Minior till one isn't attacked, but make sure you are counting the KOs. When you hit 60, I knock out a few more than 60 to be safe personally, but 60 is the needed number, you'll want to save your game. At this point, you have the highest odds of a shiny spawning from the outbreak. Continue knocking them out until the game tells you the outbreak has dispersed or you get a shiny if you're extremely lucky. 
If the outbreak is gone, restart your game and continue auto-battling as before. Repeat until you see those sparkles or the day ends. I'm reading for the first one. May all you hunters find your shiny, spinny stars. Like I did after 1,855 encounters. That's the official end of this guide. If you found it helpful, please like the video. I spent a really long time compiling all this information. I have a lot of Pokemon content planned out for the future, so consider subscribing too. I'll leave you with some footage of my shiny stars having a picnic together. May all of you be fortunate in your hunts for Minior and have yourself a lovely day.